bankrupt for the restaurant for the D. Ay. Pop my lips for the D. Ay. Get a restaurant unseasoned chicken for the D. Ay. Switch wigs for the D. Ay. Visit the underground railroad for the D. Ay. Fuck a white man, D. Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black e neck on. y'all tired of hearing it, but let's go on and talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta Part 2 Reunion. Marlo and Portia continue their beef or conversation or whatever that is. Marlo, you was wrong. Portia, you was wrong. Anna reads one of the reader's questions and says, Portia, girl, don't you think it was a little crazy or uh, hypocritical for you to put that scepter, whatever, moon? Scepter magic! Come on, Sailor Moon. Put that in Marlo's face and not expect her to react because you did the same thing with Kenya Moore. And Portia said, um, girl, I have nothing to say. Um, I have nothing to say on that matter, huh? Girl, she was just giving a Starbucks type of tease, like, girl, we're gonna shut down. She shut down right there for that minute and said, girl, I don't have anything to say. And uh, Marlo questioned her, said, girl, you did this and it was wrong, honey, and now I'm gonna get you together. Where Portia said, well, I'm in a better place now. That's why I got up and walked away. Now, I will give Portia some leeway because she did, you know, walk away. She's walked away from Marlo, um, you know, antagonizing her twice. She did it during the, the Halloween party and she also did it in Barcelona. So, Portia is really, you know, getting better. Now, I wonder, are people going to use Use the same type of view or whatever for everybody else because I've seen other folks pop off and stuff, but Porsche, you the one that's snatching folks' wigs and shit. I'm finally glad that Porsche had an opportunity to, to talk about y'all always bring up the things that I've done, y'all always bring up the past. I've apologized. Season 10 has nothing been uh, about apologies and this, this, and that, and Candy, how she feel, and you damaged my career, which Candy has every right to say that she can do whatever she wants to with that. Um, but you know, it seems like Porsche has apologized a plenty of times. I said for myself, I don't think Portia should apologize to the group. Um, I don't care what Cynthia talking about. I don't care what Nini talking about. She doesn't owe an apology to the group. I don't give a damn. Y'all all was sitting there watching. Y'all have all done crazy shit throughout the whole season. Um, and, you know, throughout the whole seasons, to be honest. And y'all have not apologized to the group. So I think because y'all really don't really too much care for Portia that much, that y'all want her to apologize. Like, look, we told you about Phaedra. We told y'all. We told you that she was a fraud and this and that. You didn't listen to us. So that's what I'm getting from it. So I'm glad that Portia said, you know, you know, even when I we try to move forward, y'all always bring up, well, you gonna do the same thing you did to Candy? You gonna do this with Candy? Because that's not how you move forward if you keep bringing up the same stuff. Now, I'm glad one of the viewers asked Marlo a question about, girl, how can you be sitting here trying to gather Portia when, girl, you have been slicing girls up in the face like you work for Pizza Hut? Now, I didn't know about Marlo and her track record and stuff. I just thought the only tracks that she was doing was the tracks and running the tracks trying to chase white men. But I didn't know nothing about her, you know, swiping folks up and shit, girl. I didn't know anything about that, and I'm glad somebody asked that, girl, Kenya was ready honey. She said, I've never sliced anybody up. Marlo said, you know, she has a past and, you know, that is the past and she's moved on about her business. But if you want to be honest, that, that was the past for Portia too. So Marlo, girl, you sliced somebody's face up. You know, even though Portia did what she did and stuff, girl, you still put your hands on somebody and went to jail for it. So girl, what's the tea? So during all this, Marlo got tired of Kenya shading her and she dropped some tea on Twitter. Honey, I'm glad I did my review kind of late because I got a chance to see, um, you know, their little tangent or whatever that Marlo was doing, honey. She exposed, I don't know if it's true or not. She brought up some old text message from 2013 and the text message show Kenya was talking to Marlo and she was happy about dating some rich white man. So Marlo said, girl, Kenya, why you worried about me dating rich white men? You were trying to get on the white train too, so girl, don't stop it because you married, honey. Don't stop till you get enough. Hey, looking just like Michael Jackson. Candy and Portia finally shake hands. They finally get together and say, girl, we're going to move on. Portia tries to apologize. Even when Portia tried to apologize and say, you know, let's, let's talk. Um, Candy like, girl, I, I don't want to hear that. I, I just, I don't, like, she just had that, that, that nonchalant tone, but that's just Candy, you know, Candy, you know, got that non-forgiving spirit, well, she carries some stuff for the rest of her days, I mean, girl, that's what she, she can do that, um, and, you know, Portia just said, girl, like, I take ownership for all this stuff. I don't think that Portia owed apology to the group at all. I don't think Portia should apologize to anybody. She just doesn't have to apologize to her. I just, I don't understand. The only person she owes apology to us is Candy. That's the only person that she directly affected. Like, girl, y'all was just bystanders, honey. Don't nobody owe y'all ass no, no damn uh, apology for that shit. Now, I could not get over Sheree hugging the um, colonizer Kim. And this is what people are talking about. Like, you carry bones, but you only carry black bones. You don't carry any white bones, which I find ironic. Girl, you don't carry any of these things. And you must be burying them under that ugly ass doghouse looking house from the outside. The inside is pretty. Inside jelly, but the outside looks like um, a brown paper bag. It's so ugly. It looks, I don't understand. You and Kim... The relationship is 
it is problematic as hell. Nene's rape joke come up and Nene says she's taking ownership for it. She's apologized for it. She's a better person. She understands that that stuff was trash. Sheree interjects and said, girl, I would have never said that to a woman. But Nene said, girl, if you want to talk about it, I've been talking about domestic violence in season one. And that is true. Nene has been very vocal about her relationships and domestic violence in season one. Sheree, you have not been vocal about anything than wearing cheap ass fashion and talking about cheap ass Sheree and we still have yet to see it. I thought it was very messy for Anne to ask that question. Uh, do you think Candace should have worked harder to keep you on? Like, girl, I'm glad that Nene gave. Nene really did a great job doing this reunion. She held it together for part one and part two, sort of, until she got into Ken, but she deserved to get into her. But the fact that she said, look, like, I understand what position Candy was in, and I'm a businesswoman. I understand how this shit works. But while we talk about that, we talk about Candy's and um, Nene's relationship over the years and how they've gotten better, and they just made an agreement, like, girl, we're going to stop shading each other. We're going to move on, because y'all know Nene and Candy Candy used to bump heads and they're just both two strong like personalities and they just don't take no shit. So Nene and Candy said, girl, we're going to do better. We're going to attack these other hoes. We ain't going to be attacking each other. We're going to use our powers together and be Captain Planet to these bitches. Bottle explains what her job is. She said that she is not a prostitute and that it hurts her feelings when Kenya says that. And you know, the ladies agree and say, we're not going to call anybody else any prostitute. We're not going to do that. And Portia said, I just want, and Portia won't bring it up, but Portia, you've done it. Kenya called you out on it. You have done it. Made several jokes and said something about her doing a one of one eyed African, this and that, like girl, they were to receive. You even made fun of Cynthia and her husband doing stuff, like girl, Porsche, you have done a lot. You have been shady, girl. They were pulling up the receipts on you. The ladies agreed not to do that. And Marlo says that you know it hurts her feelings, um, and she doesn't she doesn't appreciate it. So they asked Marlo what her um her business or whatever. She said simply Marlo LLC. That's not a business, like girl, that's just a business name. What is your business? What do you do? All you said was just simply Marlo LLC, and that doesn't really tell anything. They don't tell us anything, Marlo. I mean, girl. If you got $100, $200, anybody can get an LLC, honestly. So, Marlo is dismissed. Um, they bring Eva back out. And, they, you know, Eva said, girl, I'm contracting. I believe that Eva ass wasn't contracting, honey. I honestly don't believe that shit. She called Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie said, girl, you got to go. You got to go. I believe Eva said, girl, I don't want to be with these hoes. I ain't got nothing else to talk about. But Annie do get some more tea out of her. And I was like, okay, we ready for it. Um, and, and Eva... I really was not kind of here for you uh, being on the show for next season, but after some of the remarks and the comments you gave, I was here for it. When you gathered and said that Messy Mia was right here being messy when she, you know, asked about her relationship with a woman, you know, she said, girl, what is the problem with y'all making these jokes about, you know, gay and lesbian people? Like, that's not funny. Why y'all using it? Why y'all weaponizing it? I'm glad that she brought it up. Some folks seemed to be rolling their eyes when she said it because it seemed like it was kind of orchestrated. But nonetheless, Eva was the person to say, girl, y'all got to stop using it, even if I did or even if that did happen. Like, that's not what the T is. Y'all don't do that. You just don't, you don't do this. Like, how can y'all dare sit up here on this platform and, and, and make jokes like that? So, Shamia, girl, you are trash. You call her Miss and Mia. That's going to be her name. And, Shamia, you did all that and you ain't even on here. Um, That's so sad. Cynthia and Candace crush, girl crush. I believe Cynthia has been through enough. She said she wants some salmon. She wants some salmon patties and she ready for um Miss Candace to mash hers or they mash each other. So, girl, just make it happen. I guess we got to talk to Todd about that because y'all know, um, y'all know Candy and and Todd are freak as hell. Todd and Candy freak as hell, so maybe they can go down. Go down on the D. Hey, maybe something they can make it happen, make it work. Um, so we get on the conversation about Will, and does Cynthia have a real relationship with Will? I honestly told y'all from the beginning, I did not believe that Will and Cynthia had something going on. I believe it was a scheme that Todd came up to bring us unseasoned chicken or old lady game. That's what I believe. I don't believe that they actually had a relationship or whatever, and um, it just wasn't true. And then come to find out, Nene said, girl, Will was not even Cynthia's cup of tea honest because she liked darker skinned men and she liked men with a little bit more spice and girl it seemed like Peter liked young women with a type of skin tone y'all know pictures have been surfacing of Peter dating Bucky, Shea Bucky from um, Love and Hip Hop franchise. I guess she said she's going to be part-time on Bravo. Like, Shea Bucky, Bucky, whatever your name is, girl, I guess you just, you change men like you change your wigs, your hairline, and your forehead, and your big-ass mouth. So, girl, I guess you continue to do that. I guess it's cute for you. Peter and Shea, I, I don't know. Um, Andy said, girl, do you want to meet uh, Peter's new girlfriend? Is it Shea? Do y'all believe that Peter is actually dating Shea? I, I think Shea is just an intern woman for, like, dates. I don't know. I feel like she's just a fitness. And like, okay, you dating Shay. I feel like that Shay has her pictures on some people's wall, and they say, okay, we need what's name to have a girlfriend this season. And they just say, girl, Shay will do it, and she'll do it for cheap. Portia, I don't understand why in the hell you offering um, Andy some uh, flights to Wakanda. Um, girl, the jokes about Andy liking Black Pink. 
That didn't shock me at all, but girl, y'all offering him some um some flights and some shit, girl. He can stay his ass right over here in the U.S. He has enough stuff to gallop, okay? He maybe can call Todd Hall and get some of that Asher Brown pain. Finally get to the good shit. Kim comes out because all the other stuff was boring. Honestly, the first 30, 40 minutes were boring as hell. I didn't give a damn about any of that. Kim came out with them lips, girl, looking like she was carrying some bones, some dog food. And I bet when Kim goes to the grocery store and they ask her, girl, paper or plastic, she already says, girl, I, already, I have enough right here. Like, Kim sat down and immediately Andy was over her from the beginning, honey. He already had put up a snippet up somewhere and said, you know, he's seen the last of that wig and, you know, Kim won't be on Real Housewives Atlanta at all no more. Kim sat down and Andy said, girl, you look younger than you did nine years ago. Girl, that shit was so damn shady. Kim didn't know how to do it because she was defenseless when talking to a white person. She didn't know how to do it. She didn't know how to respond. She didn't know if she wanted to play the innocent white woman that has no idea what's going on. Kim wasn't sure what type of white woman to give Andy when he did that because she felt she was in her you know comfort zone. She's sitting next to a white man. She said, oh girl, we see each other. I ain't got nothing. But Andy came for her ass immediately. Andy asked Kim, what's going on with her lips? Bitch disgusting. And Kim really didn't have an answer, girl. You, She said, depends on what day it is. Do you know what today is? It's our lip anniversary. Made for you and me. I'm trying to understand why Kim lips look like that. Somebody explain to me. And what else pissed me off and now that I think about it, Kim came on the set with a red cup. She had a phone in her hand and she shoes off. I guarantee you if there would have been any of those other black women, and it would have probably gotten their ass together. I, I just think that y'all literally give um, Kim leeway to do whatever she wants to do and she can be as ratchet as she wants but the moment a black woman does it like it's an issue y'all let Kim walk on the set with a red cup her shoes off and girl she had her phone out it, it, it was just I, I wasn't here for it and I understand completely what Nene issue is with Kim when Nene had got on Instagram and she said girl I ain't feeling Kim there's a lot of things I cannot say about Kim but I, I just cannot just have to let it rest but there's some things that y'all don't know. I believe you, Nene. I believe that Kim Zosiak Beerman or paper bag lip or whatever you want to call her, child plastic bag lip, I believe that she does have some issues and she is a racist. I do. I, I, I believe that Kim is racist. I don't believe she's racial. I believe she's racist. I believe she said stuff that they cannot show and, and Nene can't talk about because she's under contract. So they start talking about M. Bella in the elephant room and Nene is asked the question, what does she want? What was the purpose of the elephant room? And Nene says she wants to get the ladies together and have a conversation about all the things that were going on. Immediately Kim came in there. She was very disrespectful to Mbella. Like they got into it and someone, a source like I told you all had provided me with some alleged screenshots of a conversation that Kim had with production when she was talking about um, Mbella and she called her dumb black bitch. Now you can check that out. I have it in the comment section for you to read. Honey, it's on kingareese.com. I can't, you know, authenticate it at kingareese.com. I've been doing a lot of research and trying to see if that is Kim, if this is a real screenshot, is it Photoshop, but I just opened it up to the King's Council. The King's Council is a group of people which are you the readers and stuff who can decipher what if you think this is true or is it fabricated and a lot of people said they kind of believe it honey but if you you want to take a look at it make sure you check it out on kingreese.com so kim is getting hammered with questions she's getting everything the question is asked of kim why did she tell Cynthia to like shut her mouth and not say anything and just look cute? It was condescending. I'm glad that Kenya pointed it out. Like it was disrespectful for, for Kim as a white woman to tell another black woman like be quiet. Like girl, y'all don't have the right. And I don't understand. I want people to understand this completely. White women and men, you do not have the right to talk to black people like that considering the history and the things you don't have. And you had your time. You used it up. You used your jokes up. You used whatever that time was. That time here, you cannot do it again. So you need to be respectful at all times. It was disrespectful and it came off racist. I don't give a damn what nobody said. What Kim said there, it, I, 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 it made me cringe. And I'm glad Cynthia said, girl, you also were shaded towards me and you and Sharif, y'all sat on this couch and made a joke about I wouldn't have gotten far if I wasn't cute. And I'm glad Cynthia got, uh, Cynthia really Girl, you made me love you, honey. You made me love because you were getting that at Kim. And Kim was like, I don't remember that. She was playing that white woman card. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the same shit that woman did at uh, Macon, Georgia, when she was attacking those two black women who were in the um, the military. Now, I cannot wait to talk about that on For the Culture Podcast. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. Because I'm going in. I cannot do this on this platform. I cannot go in like I used to. And that's why we have built For the Culture Podcast on ForTheCulturePodcast.com. And I'm just, I can't go in like I usually do because... 
YouTube ain't playing them type of games. So if you want to hear me completely drag, you're going to have to take your ass on the podcast, girl. That's just what the T is. NeNe finally goes berserk and she lets Kim have it. She just said, y'all is your scooter. But well, she asked her that, but I can't wait till she, she gets on Kim ass. She was going at Kim and Kim said, oh, this bitch owe me an apology. No, nobody owes you an apology, Kim. I cannot wait to see Nene go to complete the fuck in on Kim. I cannot wait till she do it because I feel like Kim is full of shit. I feel like she's full of it and I cannot wait till Nene like really tears into her ass, girl, because Kim is a mess. She is a mess. She just, like, she's very vindictive. She's, I, I just don't like her at all. I just, I not, I don't care for her. But let me know what y'all thought about this Real Housewives of Atlanta review. What y'all thought about this part two? I thought it was boring and bland as hell into the, like, the last 10 minutes. But we did learn some stuff. It was buffered. We had a good conversation. We laughed about some stuff. But tell me what y'all thought about my For the D Challenge. We're talking about all the housewives. Who do you think what joke applied to who? Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to y'all later on tonight. Bye. Fuck you looking at, bitch.